All right, if you've been hunting for leaked images and scavenging for information, you can call off the search. The LA Auto Show is here, and nearly 50 cars are about to make their North American or world debuts. Now, the doors don't open to the general public for two more days, but today is press day, and I'm taking you with me. Now last year, more than 920,000 people came out. And this year, they're expecting more than a million. And I don't doubt that they'll get those numbers. They've got 24 global debuts and a bunch of really highly anticipated unveilings. One car that I knew would be of great importance to my fellow Californians was, of course, the Porsche Cayman. This state is fanatic about Porsches. So yes, of course, I was excited to see it. It was the world debut, but I really wanted to talk with the designers and find out some inside info. The best person to get me connected to a designer? Angus McKenzie. All right, so now we're at the Porsche stand. I know this is a huge deal to all the California enthusiasts. How big a deal is this globally? Well, today in particular, it's a big deal because we're going to see the world debut of the new Porsche Cayman. This will be the first time this car is seen in public. The press conference is about to start, so we better hurry. All right, let's go. So what can I expect to see at this world premiere? Porsche's kept images and details of the new Cayman pretty much under wraps. So this is quite a big deal for the LA show, a global premiere of a new Porsche sports car. It's going to be quite exciting. I want to talk a little bit about the color choice, right? It's the first time the world's ever going to see the car. How much goes into like the color they choose? Bear in mind, we're in a room in the LA Convention Center that has been completely fitted out by Porsche just for this event. And so it's all in you know, clinical white with nice Porsche badges. There's some great displays around here. So a lot of time and effort and thought has gone into creating this environment. And arguing over the color of the car is, is a major point. It will be interesting to see what they come out with. Here we go. It's time. Have a, at least a close look. All right. Unless I'm standing on his shoulders, there's no way I'm going to see anything. <laughs> That's about as close as you're going to get for now. What I usually do is I wait for the rush to die down. Okay. We'll come back in a couple of hours. I know some of the executives here, we'll dig them out and we can get you know, some real information and uh, a really closer look at the car. So why don't we do that? Okay, let's go. Now the Cayman wasn't the only vehicle that we were really excited to see. There were several others that we were eagerly anticipating. This I've been waiting to see. I'm such a sucker for the SLS. Maybe it's the going doors, I don't know. It's just the whole package. But a black series, I mean, yeah. this is going to be pretty over the top. I mean, the SLS itself is enough of a beast yeah. anyway. Um, you know, I spent uh, uh, a week in one in Europe in the, the summer in the convertible version. And I'm staggeringly fast in a straight line. So with black series tweaks, more power, stiffer suspension, wing on the back, it's going to be a pretty special ride. I, I really like to drive this one. Even though 
Angus and I don't always agree, I am always interested in what he has to say. Ah, the highly anticipated NSX. You know, I've been around long enough to have been to the launch of the original NSX back in the early 90s, and I got mixed feelings about this car. You know, when the NSX came out back then, it was a better car than a Ferrari 348. I mean, it put the Italians on notice. And yet, Honda went away and basically ignored the car. It, it was slowly allowed to die, and then they stopped making it. Now, they want to bring the NSX back. And I really hope they do, but I really hope they're committed this time. It's like Japanese car companies have a problem with commitment. I really hope they're committed to the idea of building a supercar. You kind of wonder sometimes what happens between you know, the intellectual conception of what the car is going to be and what actually comes out off the end of the production line. And sometimes there can be this great disconnect. And that's one of the fascinations of the car industry for me is that you know, it's this really intricate mix of people, politics and process. Mm -hmm. And that's what affects what actually we get to drive. Angus was the perfect person to go with to the LA Auto Show because he's seen this show evolve and change. Not to mention that he's an, a walking encyclopedia of automotive knowledge and he is incredibly well connected. So we headed back to the Porsche display to meet up with the designer. So from a design point of view, is it easier to do a convertible or a coupe? No, a coupe. For me, it's coupe. Now, this car is... Uh, with the box that was made a little more masculine, a little tougher. The sentence we had as a headline, more grown up. So, more grown up, so how has that come through with the Cayman? The first step is really the proportions of the car have yep. changed. You have a slightly longer uh, wheelbase. Yes. That makes the car looking a little bit longer, but as well lower. You have the, the front track that is wider. Again, there the relation between the width and the height becomes more sporty. Um, and then, I mean, this is really the architecture of the car and then we have as well introduced uh, things that you partly know already from the Boxster that is this combination of, of surface treatment where you have this radius that is a little bit uh, tighter yep. and then this, as we call it, precision lines that give more structure to the design and, and that gives the whole car more tension. So I've seen a ton of cool cars. I got to meet a lot of interesting people. What is next? Well, in about six weeks time, we'll be in Detroit. Freezing our asses off. <laughs>